2023 Animal Reiki Talk. I'm very happy to be here with you tonight to talk about our very special topic, top tips to develop a strong daily animal Reiki meditation practice. And so my plan for us tonight is I'm going to be talking about this topic sort of in the beginning. And then I'll open it up to Q&A if anybody wants to share, uh, ask a question or share anything about in your world of animal Reiki. And then we'll finish as always, as we always do with our uh, animal healing circle. You can invite in whatever animals or people that you might be, that might be close to your heart tonight that you want some uh, group healing support. And so that is our plan. All right, so let's begin by talking about our tonight's very special topic, my top tips to develop a strong daily animal Reiki meditation practice. So those of you who know me and know the Let Animals Lead method of animal Reiki, you know that meditation is the total foundation of everything we do in this work. And the reason is because animals connect in the Reiki space much differently than we humans do. Um, they uh, don't respond to physical touch in the same way. Actually, many animals prefer to not have a physical touch. They also respond to our thoughts in a very different way. And they're very sensitive to negative thoughts or, or focusing on what's wrong. Um, there are a lot of <laughs> ways that animals notice things in our energy that we as human beings may not notice so easily. So because of this, over um, my last 25 years of doing this practice, I have really evolved the way I see what animal Reiki is and how we best support animals with Reiki. And that is through meditation. And so if you want to practice the let animals lead method and you want to help animals with Reiki, the best way to do this is to get a strong daily meditation practice. Now, why do we need a daily meditation practice? Can't we just meditate every once in a while when an animal needs help or something? Well, not really. And the reason is because meditation is kind of like building muscles at the gym. So if you go to the gym and you start a new workout program, at the beginning, you're not gonna be able to, to lift very heavy weights, right? You're gonna be kind of weak and then you'll be sore, <laughs> but you keep going and eventually you're lifting heavier and heavier weights. And then one day you're home and something falls and you catch it and you don't even strain yourself because you're so strong and you were ready, right? <laughs> and so just in the same way that our physical training can help us in those moments when we need strength, our spiritual training, through meditation can help us when our animals need us the most. So if we decide, oh, I'm not going to do a daily meditation practice, I'll just, I'll just do animal Reiki meditation once in a while when my animal needs me. Well, then guess what happens? An animal, your animal gets sick or an animal you care about gets sick. There's a lot of emotions involved there and you don't have a foundation. So you're going in there trying to remember what are my, what are my practices? How, how do I do this? and you don't have the muscles <laughs> from going to the gym. So your daily meditation practice is your spiritual training to be able to support your animals with Reiki. So I just wanted to kind of start with that to let everybody know, this is why we're doing this topic tonight because it is so very important. And in order to prepare for tonight's talk, what I've done is I've, I've actually gone through and looked at a lot of different research on the best ways to develop habits because it can be difficult especially for some of us who have we might have difficulty focusing our mind uh, we have very busy minds um, some of us might have difficulty sitting still and in that case you can do walking meditations which is good but we we may put up a lot of resistance to doing a meditation practice and it might be difficult for us to think could i ever have a daily practice that sounds so hard right so I did a lot of research and I'm going to actually come out with a blog with links to all the different things um, that I researched for tonight's talk and a more in-depth look at what we talk about tonight. And that blog will come out at the beginning of next month in the December 1st newsletter. So stay tuned for that. But anyway, <laughs> in doing this research, I came up with seven top tips to help us develop that habit. Okay. 
So I'm going to walk you through all seven of those steps tonight. And um, if any of these resonate with you or sound helpful, jot, jot down notes to yourself and start implementing them. And um, I, I would love to hear how it helps you. All right. So let's go to our very first, my first number one top tip. If you want to develop a strong daily animal Reiki meditation practice, and this is set goals. So the first thing we have to do is figure out why are we doing this? <laughs> okay. And I know it sounds simple, but it's very easy to overlook something that's so simple. And yet this can really give us that inspiration for on the days when we don't feel like practicing, we revisit our goals and help us remember the bigger picture and why we're doing this and why it's so important. So we want to really in detail, write down our reasons for starting a meditation practice. So all of you who are here, you want to do animal Reiki with your animal and you want to learn more about starting that strong meditation daily practice, right? So I want you to think about the positive reasons why you want to do this. So I have some to help you. So some of these might resonate with you. So let's start with reasons why for ourselves, we should do this animal Reiki meditation practice. So first of all, it's going to, of course, improve our relationships with animals. Who doesn't want that, right? I think I already have a pretty good relationship with my animals, but why not go deeper? Why not strengthen the bond even more? Maybe make it easier to make relationships with other animals besides my own, you know? How beautiful. I love that, right? So that's one thing that will it will help us do. Also, it's going to deepen our understanding of animals. And when we understand them better, we connect to them better. And this means that you know, there might be animals that you're really familiar with and comfortable with. Maybe you're a cat person or you're a dog person or you're a horse person and you know those animals you feel comfortable. But maybe there's other species that you aren't, you don't really know them very well. Well, through Reiki, you can connect to all different species, even the ones that you may not be familiar with. And you can learn so much about them just from sitting with them in that meditation space understanding their essence at an essential level, at a really deep level. And how beautiful is that? And understand them a little bit better. And so it's really widening that circle of compassion and understanding that we have for animals of all species. Isn't that an amazing goal, right? What the world needs most. Next, if you have a daily meditation practice, you're going to be improving your focus focus and your concentration. And this means actually you're going to be able to care for your animals better. You're also going to decrease your stress level. This is going to help you in many ways, but one of the ways will be you'll sleep better. Another way is your blood pressure is going to go down. Those of you who have high blood pressure from stress, right? Not good for your health. So you're really going to be calming all of that. And, and those of us, when we are well rested and we have a, a, you know, a calmer being within ourselves, we live a happier life. Also, when we have a daily meditation practice, it helps us be more emotionally balanced. When we're emotionally balanced, it helps our animals feel safe and secure. So this is for us, but also for them. Meditating every day helps lower your anxiety and feelings of depression. It also lessens pain, physical or emotional pain. And it also boosts your immunity so that you are physically more healthy. And that not that what we want so that we can really be there for our animals so, so deeply? So these are just a few of the ways that a daily meditation practice is going to help you. And now I want to talk about the ways that your daily animal Reiki meditation practice is going to help your animals. So first of all, you are creating this healing Reiki space through your meditation. When your animals choose to step in and share that space with you, it's going to decrease their stress. It's going to lower their anxiety. 
if they have any kind of pain, whether it's physical or emotional, it's going to lessen and lighten that. It's also going to boost their immunity. And it helps their bodies go into self-healing mode. And this helps support the healing process, whatever they need it for, you know, on all levels, physical, mental, emotional, spiritual, all those levels get, get touched in that beautiful rest and relaxation space that Reiki creates. Also, we are going to be giving them a feeling that they're safe and supported and can count on us. And when our animals don't feel well, they really need to hear that message. They need to know that. So that's important that we are giving them that message by offering this space to them. It also is going to help us to remember all as well. That's one of the practices in our meditation, our Let Animals Lead meditation. And animals in turn will remember, oh, all is well, everything's okay. If animals are stressed because they're not feeling well, we're reminding them everything's okay. This helps them get through difficult situations. So that message, all is well, is really important. And that's something that we say to them every single day in our practice. And finally, animals love routine and we're creating a healing routine together, okay? So when we do our daily meditation practice, if you can, choose the same time and place every day and your animals will learn to expect it. And they might even remind you if you forget. I have a lot of, of students who this happens there and it's often with cats and they know that, oh, it's Reiki time and where are you? And they'll come over and, and sort of meow at you and say, let's go and lead you over to your meditation space. <laughs> and so this shows that, you know, they, they grow to, to really love that time that you spend together and it, they feel the support of it. And so they're actually helping you. So when you get too busy or you forget, or you're like, oh, maybe not today, they give you that little nudge. No, come on, let's do our practice. Okay. So this, these, this is the first tip is set your goals. So I want you to think about any of those things I said for yourself or for your animals, which of those resonate for you? I want you to write down your goals. You know, why are you here tonight? What is it about a daily meditation practice that appeals to you that you feel is gonna, gonna help you or your animals? Write that down and look at it and think about it because Knowing what those goals are is going to help give you the motivation to create this new habit, to build and maintain this new habit of daily meditation. So that leads us to my second tip about creating your daily meditation practice. And this is start small. Okay, start small. Give yourself time to build up. Now, those of you who have taken Let Animals Lead Method Animal Reiki classes, you know, I always say the ideal length of an animal Reiki session is 30 to 60 minutes. And there's a lot of reasons for that. We talk about it in our level one training, but, but don't get discouraged and you don't have to start out at that. You can build up to that. Start small, give yourself time, just like at the gym. You don't go to the gym and pick up the heaviest weight on your very first day. <laughs> That's not going to go well. So it's the same thing with meditation. Start small and naturally in time, you'll be able to do it for longer and longer and longer. And, you know, even if you do a short meditation with your animals, you'll often get that immediate reward of uh, a little you know, dog kiss or a little kitty cat purr. So you're going to have these little ways that your animals are like, yes, that was only two minutes, but I loved it. So they'll help kind of, they'll help you move forward and they'll help you feel good about those small, small steps. So I want, what I want you guys to do for this one, I want you to focus on small goals and even write down what those small goals are to help you focus and remember them as you begin this practice. And again, our goal is to create this new daily habit, this healthy habit for our life, for our healing journey, okay? So write down little goals and keep track of how you're doing. So make these little goals specific. So for example, you could write down, 
Okay, how am I gonna start? Okay, here's something I can do. I'm gonna begin and end my day reciting the Reiki precepts three times while I'm sitting with my animal. Okay, what a great way to start your day and end your day. And maybe that's all it is to begin with. You can do that. How long does that take? A minute, <laughs> right? But you'll find that this is the building block of mindfulness that is gonna create that foundation for a longer, deeper meditation practice. Here's another small goal that might appeal to you. Each time I feel worried about my animal's health, I will say, all is well, three times. How many of you have animals who are facing illness, um, a chronic condition, maybe they've just had surgery, maybe they're just getting old and you worry about them. So you find yourself worrying about them throughout the day. So here we're building a new habit. Every time that worry comes up, all is well, all is well, all is well, right? You can do that. Only well, takes a second, but it can really shift your perspective. Here's another small goal that might appeal to some of you. At 8 a.m. every day, pick a time that works for you, okay? I will practice the Reiki space meditation with my animals for five minutes. Those of you who've taken level one, you know the Reiki space meditation. We're going to do a shortened version of it at the end tonight for our animal healing circle. So it should be kind of familiar to everybody who follows me. So basically making that intention each day at a certain time when it's that time, you're going to sit, stand, or walk with your animal. If you're sitting with your cat or standing in the pasture with your horse or walking your dog, you're going to take five minutes and focus on that meditation. You could do that. Five minutes, easy, right? So keep track. And once a week, reward yourself for sticking to these little goals. So the, the rewards are important. So some of the rewards are built in because your animals are going to be thanking you. And that is a wonderful feeling to feel all their love and support and happiness that you're doing this. But I want you to find another reward for yourself, whatever it is, and give yourself a kudos and a reward once a week. And then slowly, when you're ready, when you feel, I could do more, like when you're at the gym and you're like, oh, this weight is too light for me now. You're going to feel like, huh, five minutes is too short for me now. You're going to get to that space. Build, maybe add two minutes and so on, right? And keep track and keep rewarding yourself as you go. So that is the second tip, starting small. That's important. All right, you ready for our third tip to help us develop a strong daily animal Reiki meditation practice. This is something called habit stacking. Have you ever heard of this before? What this means is you're stacking a new behavior on top of an old one that you already have. So you already have an old habit that you do all the time, and you're going to stack your meditation practice on top of that habit so that your old habit reminds you to do the new habit, <laughs> okay? So what I want you to do, and this works best if you find a positive habit you're already doing, <laughs> okay? So don't, don't think, okay, every time I break down and go have a cigarette, I'm gonna do Reiki. Maybe that's not the best way to do habit stacking. I want you to find a habit that you already have, something really simple, and build that meditation practice on top of it. Here's a couple of examples that might work for you or give you an idea, okay? Here's one. How many of you have a morning cup of tea or a morning cup of coffee? Probably a lot of you, right? So why not add your meditation to that? Now remember, we're starting small. So don't say to me, but Kathleen, I can't sit there for a half an hour with my coffee. That's not what I'm asking you to do. I want you to take that, that little goal, that small goal, 
And when you sit down with your coffee, do that practice. For example, reciting the Reiki precepts three times and making sure your animal's with you when you do it, okay? As you're sitting with your cup of tea. Now, if you love tea the way I do and you have it every morning, <laughs> that cup of tea is gonna become a reminder. Also, you probably feel positive and happy when you're having your tea. So this is another reinforcement for your new habit is you're in a happy place when you're starting to build it, right? Here's another way you can do a habit stacking. How many of you take your dog for a walk every day? I know I do every single day, actually twice a day I walk my dog. <laughs> Never miss, okay? I'm out there in rain and wind and when I'm sick or whatever, the dog gets walked every single day. So dog people, you know what I'm talking about, right? Okay, do this practice when you're walking your dog. Again, doesn't have to be for the whole walk, but take a moment when you're somewhere that's quiet, things seem kind of settled, your dog's sniffing happily, and do one of those short practices. And make it a habit. Every single time you walk your dog, you do your practice. Well, you're walking your dog all the time. You're going to be building that habit of meditation without even realizing it. And this is the thing that I really love about habit stacking is if you choose a, a habit that you have that you just do without thinking about it and you stack your meditation on top, it's going to happen like effortlessly. So try that. Here is a fourth tip to building a strong daily meditation practice with your animals. Use this time to break an old habit that's not good for you, okay? So think about your meditation practice is gonna replace an old habit that no longer serves you. And this is gonna be your new habit that you replace it with. For example, Plan that when you find yourself focusing on only what's wrong with your animal, you instead tell yourself, when I focus on the negative about my animal, I'm going to see the perfection instead. <laughs> this is a good one because we all struggle with that negative habit, right, of focusing on what's wrong. And so using that moment that you know is going to come up maybe several times a day, to insert the new practice, remembering the positive, which is one of our really important practices in our meditation. Or here's another one. Maybe um, you're trying to cut down on sweets, okay? I mean, okay, maybe I'm talking a little from experience because we just had Halloween. <laughs> so I'm always searching for the vegan versions of Halloween candy, which also are very unhealthy. And yet somehow I feel that they're okay. <laughs> Not really. So I'm eating a little too much candy. So here's an idea. Whenever I feel pulled to eat a piece of candy, instead, I'm going to sit down with my animal and I'm going to do a five minute meditation with them. Now, here's the second part of that. The more mindful we are, and this is what our meditation brings to us, truly being present with ourselves in this moment, mindful and present. When we're really mindful, the less we're drawn to the habits that aren't good for us, whatever they may be. Because those habits usually happen kind of unconsciously. We're just doing them without thinking about it. But if we really sat and thought, we'd be like, oh, I don't really want that piece of candy right now. Don't really need that, you know? So I hope that maybe that ha has brought something to mind. An old habit you're ready to replace with your new habit of meditation. Okay, here is the fifth tip for building a strong daily animal Reiki meditation practice. Reward yourself. So... We've already talked about the long-term benefits of a daily meditation practice, and we know this is undeniable, but research has shown that if you give yourself an immediate reward, your new habit builds more easily and quickly. So only you know what reward will feel best for you, 
And it can be something very small, like even just in your mind going, yay, I did my meditation, giving yourself kudos, right? Or it could be something like just acknowledging, it feels so good to see my animal relax and feel better. But really acknowledging that, like, wow, I feel so thankful about that, right? Or, you know, celebrating your, your horse yawned or your dog went to sleep, you know, one of these little things. Really take a moment and celebrate that. That can be a little reward for yourself, right? So find a way to acknowledge and reward yourself in the moment if you can in small ways, because that will help make your new habit more resilient and easier to keep. The sixth tip for building a strong daily animal Reiki meditation practice is be kind to yourself throughout the process. So some days meditation will be easier than others and that's totally normal and that's okay. You don't have to have a perfectly focused Zen namaste mind, you know, to do good. Embrace your humanness, accept each session as perfect. Hey, you practiced, so yay, perfect, right? And well, what if you fall off your practice for a bit? Well, it's never too late to start again and don't beat yourself up about it. Don't waste your time beating yourself up about that you didn't meditate for the last week, you're sitting here now doing it. Give yourself kudos. All is well, acceptance, right? Forgiveness, yes. Research has shown that self-compassionate people are more likely to adopt and stick with health-promoting behaviors like daily meditation practice. So, be kind to yourself, remember compassion for yourself, and you don't have to be perfect in this process, okay? And the final seventh tip for how to build a strong daily animal Reiki practice in meditation, get group support. There's a lot of reasons for this, but I'm just going to say for all of the Let Animals Lead community. Meditate with us online. Every month we focus on a specific meditation. I start do the practice uh, the very first Wednesday of the month and my students, my teachers of excellence, they lead their practices in later weeks. So you have an opportunity to have a live meditation practice every week of the month and you have the recording so you could play it every single day if you want. You have this live group guided practice. Groups remind you that you are accountable. You have to show up because people are counting on you, right? When I come and lead this special meditation practice, my students know, oh, Kathleen's doing a special practice. I better be there, right? Hey, you're accountable. I'm looking for you. I see those of you who are on the call tonight. Thank you for being here with me, right? you build that relationship and you're accountable to be there to show up for your community. So that's really good. Also groups remind you, you're not doing this all by yourself, depending on where you live and how, you know, isolated you are in your community. You might sometimes feel like you are the only animal Reiki person on the planet, but I promise you, you aren't, you are part of a huge, vibrant, loving, compassionate community of the most amazing people I have ever met, right? So re be reminded of this, come together with the community. Remember you're a part of this amazing group of people. And all of us are, are walking this path together. We are all deepening our connections to animals through meditation. There's so much opportunity in our community, our Let Animals Lead community, for example, to share ups and downs along the way, right? to get through those hard times, to have support when your animal's not feeling well, um, when you feel disillusioned or down because of something going on with your animal, the community holds you up and supports you. You are not alone. And that is something that can help you stay committed to your daily practice. Also, meditating together means we're part of something bigger than ourselves 
we're part of the bigger change for good in the world. We can make a huge difference for animals together. Being united with a group of like-minded animal lovers can help us stay positive about animals and the power of compassion, even in a challenging world. You know, with everything that goes on in this world with animals, sometimes we can feel overwhelmed and we can feel that what we do doesn't make a difference. But it really does. And especially amplified by the group energy. And so be a part of that change. And I'm going to kind of finish my talk tonight to share with you, you know, there has been a study, and I'm going to put the link to this, uh, a, a video of someone talking about this study. But there was a study um, many years ago, actually, um, that showed that group meditation creates world peace. So there was a group of a thousand meditators that were meditating in a specific place where there was like a war going on and they there the incidence of violence decreased significantly during that time they were meditating. So the power of group meditation has been documented and shown. So let's harness that power and change the world for animals. Let's come together as a community. This is one of the main reasons that I have created the Let Animals Lead online community. And anyone who's level one or up um, of my students is invited to join. And this is a place where we can amplify our efforts by joining together for the good of animals in the world. Meditation is hugely powerful. It is an amazing energy to bring balance, harmony, peacefulness, loving kindness, compassion, all everything good, you know, the light in the darkness. This is what our world needs. So let's come together as a community and make the change for animals. So thank you for being here with me as I talked about this, my seven top tips to developing a strong daily animal Reiki meditation practice. I hope that some of these tips have resonated with you that maybe um, it's given you some inspiration. If you haven't already started your meditation practice, or maybe if you have one, you've got some ideas for how to strengthen it and help it to go deeper, right? Um, so please let me know, keep in touch with how it's going. If we can all do this, it is so good for not only the world, as I was just saying, to change the world, but for our animals and for us too, like side effect benefit. We're going to be helped and healed by this as well. So how wonderful is that? So lots for us to think about, lots for us to be, to do and to be inspired by, and it's all for the good of animals. So thank you guys so much for um, being a part of this part of the talk. And now I'm going to open it up to anybody who is on the call tonight who might want to um, share a story or an experience or a question, or if you just have a comment, something that resonated you with you from uh, tonight, um, I'm going to open it up to you guys. Anybody? You can just unmute yourself. Hi, Kathleen. This is Patricia. Hi, Patricia. Hi. Um, <clears throat> I just wanted to share something that I just started um, practicing with the Reiki meditations a couple weeks ago. And I have um, several animals, but I have two dogs that are quite old and have various illnesses. And I did it for about three days in a row. And I started seeing these quite significant changes in my dogs. And it's it's been really amazing. They just feel so much better. Oh my gosh, that's wonderful to hear. And after just a few days, that's amazing. Yeah, it's very amazing. <laughs> Well, and it probably inspires you to keep going with your daily practice, right? <laughs> Definitely. Yeah, it's wonderful. 
That's so great. I'm so happy to hear that. Well, keep up the great work. Keep building those spiritual muscles. Yes, thank you. Anybody else? Hi, Kathleen. This is Tempest. Hi, Tempest. <laughs> How are you? <laughs> Good. Great to hear from you. Yeah. Um, I have a great story to share. Um, I was doing a remote session for a goat at one of the um, shelters that I'm working at, um, or volunteering at, excuse me. Um, and in the remote session, this goat started singing. He he cocked his head to the side and he said, and he started singing only you. And I was like, what is going on? Cause that had never really happened to me before. But um, anyway, so I went out of the meditation and I tried to do um, a separate one. Like uh, Taya, is that how you say her name? Like mm -hmm. she taught us. Um, so I tried to do like an animal communication session. My first one and just off to the side and she, um, uh, excuse me, not she, but, he was dancing. It was really interesting, but, um, he passed away, um, yesterday. And so I really feel like he was just telling us that he was in a good place and he knew, you know, his time was coming kind of like we've talked about animals passing. And it was just really beautiful for me to be able to give those messages over to the lady oh. that runs the sanctuary over there. So, yeah. That's wonderful. So, yeah. And I mean, yeah. he, he danced his way across the bridge. I mean, the way that, the yeah. way that we experience passing is often so much more difficult than the way that animals experience it. So when we can get those messages, um, that's that can be a lot of comfort to people who are grieving. So that's wonderful. Yeah. Thanks. But, Anybody else? <laughs> All right. Well, then why don't we go right into our um, our animal Reiki healing circle then. You guys ready? We'll meditate together. After I just told you guys how awesome and powerful that and amplified our group energy is let's do it <laughs> okay so let's go into gasho so palms together and we'll just take a moment to set our intent let's dedicate all the energy of this practice to our animals and we just invite them to share the space with us Then we'll rest our hands on our lap and we're gonna do some hara breathing. So your hara is your energy center in your lower belly and you can imagine it like a beautiful sphere of light shining out. And this light is your center and your point of balance, your connection to earth and grounding. And then as we breathe, we're gonna imagine our breath is a pure and clear light and as we breathe in it comes in through the crown and then fills your body with light all the way down to the hara and then as we exhale we're going to imagine this light can expand out of every pore in our skin and into our aura and out into the universe so breathing in the light filling our body connecting with the hara and breathing out, expanding this light. And breathing in, filling your body with light, connecting to the Hara, and breathing out, expanding this light in every direction. And breathing in the light, and breathing out the light. 
And breathing in and breathing out, take a moment to just do a few breaths at your own pace. And then relax your breath and see yourself sitting in this beautiful space of light, the light within and the light all around you. And this light is filled with peace, harmony and balance, compassion and loving kindness. And this is a space that our animals re truly resonate with and they can sense and feel and are drawn to. And we just hold this light as a beautiful invitation for our animals to connect, to step in if they wish. It's completely up to them. So just invite your animals to the light. but let go of expectations and just allow it to be. However it unfolds is just perfect. And if our animals choose to step in, they elevate and strengthen the space of light so much with their amazing spirit and essence. And bringing our hands back into Gosho. And just take a moment to thank our animals. However they chose to connect in this moment was just perfect because it was their choice, just perfect. And setting our intention to finish, take a nice deep breath and slowly come back and open your eyes. Well, thank you guys so much for being here, for being a part of tonight's talk. And I hope that you guys uh, have a beautiful November. I hope to see my students in the Let Animals Lead community so that I can support you in having your daily meditation practice. We have lots of other amazing events and classes and things going on. Um, I have another spirit animal and symbol mantra to class coming up later this month. Um, we have a guest speaker, Nicholas Pearson, is going to be talking about crystals as partners and uh, teachers and allies. And um, we just have so, so many amazing things happening this month. So please join me. Hope to see you in the community. And blessings to you and your animals. Thanks for being here tonight. Good night, everybody. <laughs>